Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, an epic 54,000 piece jigsaw puzzle from Graphica. If you haven't seen the other videos that I've done in this series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you at least watch the unboxing video just to get an overview of the jigsaw puzzle in its entirety. Now today I realize that this is bag 18. That means when I'm done this bag, I'll only have nine bags remaining, like single digits. It's gonna be done before I know it. And I'm like excited, but sad, <laughs> you know? I'm excited for this one because very different. Look at this, this is section 14. Look at this painting here. Oh, just beautiful, colorful, different. I can't wait to learn about it. I am glad that American Gothic isn't all that big. I've seen people work on like a thousand piece version of it and the dark colors and whatnot. It takes a lot of time. This one is another one by Van Gogh. So we're familiar with him, but these two are new artists. And so it'll be interesting, a little bit more of art history coming our way during the voiceover. If we look at our panoramic poster here of the entirety of the jigsaw puzzle. I'm working on the section right in the middle where the, let me see if I can hold it, where the, the fold is. So I've done the lower section and now we're in the middle section right there. The next section is one big large painting on its own. And again, I lost a piece or I was missing a piece from the last section. But as you saw at the end of that video, hubby fixed it for me, made me a replacement piece. It was a bit tricky though, just because it was along that vertical edge, which that's where it appears to have the most misalignment between sections. But yeah, that's about it. I'm excited for this section of the puzzle. It's bag 18, section 14. I can't wait to do this one right here. I'm glad it's so big. I think it might be actually a little bit difficult, a little bit trickier than I expect. We'll have to see. Some of these frames, I think I've seen all these frames before, so they're just slightly different in size, dimensions and whatnot. But yeah, very interesting section, three beautiful paintings. So without further ado and for the love of puzzles, let's get to work on bag 18, which is section 14 as we travel around art. There are three paintings in this section of the puzzle. The first is titled The Siesta, in French known as La Méridienne or La Sieste. It's an oil on canvas painting by Vincent van Gogh, painted between December 1889 and January 1890, while he was interned in a mental asylum in the French town of Saint-Rémy-de-Provence. He spent one year in the mental hospital and despite his unstable mental health, he was very productive. He made about 150 paintings in a year. The siesta, meaning nap, is part of the permanent collection of the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, France. It's a pretty good size at 73 by 91 centimeters in dimension. Now, even despite the peaceful nature of the subject, the painting radiates his renowned artistic intensity. The composition is taken from a drawing by French painter Jean Millet titled Four Moments in the Day. Now to justify his act, Vincent told his brother Theo, I am using another language, that of colors, to translate the impressions of light and dark into black and white. Now Van Gogh often copied the works of Millet, whom he considered to be a more modern painter than Manet. Remaining faithful to the original composition, even down to the still life details in the foreground, Vincent nevertheless imposed his own style upon this restful scene, which, for Millet, symbolized rural France of the 1860s. This highly personal retranscription is achieved primarily by means of a chromatic construction based on contrasting complementary colors, blue-violet, yellow-orange. The painting has been considered one of Vincent van Gogh's masterpieces. The second painting in this section of the puzzle is titled American Gothic, a 1930 oil on beaver board by Grant Wood 
in the collection of the Art Institute of Chicago in Illinois of the United States. Wood was inspired to paint what is now known as the American Gothic House in Eldon, Iowa, along with the kind of people he fancied should live in that house. It depicts a farmer standing beside his daughter, often mistakenly assumed to be his wife. The painting's name is a wordplay on the house's architectural style, Carpenter Gothic. The figures were modeled by Wood's sister, Nan Wood Graham, and their dentist, Dr. Byron McKibby. The woman is dressed in a colonial print apron evoking 20th century rural Americana, while the man is adorned in overalls covered by a suit jacket and carries a pitchfork. The plants on the porch of the house are mother-in-law's tongue and beefsteak begonia, which also appears in Wood's 1929 portrait of his mother, Woman with Plants. American Gothic is one of the most familiar images of the 20th century American art and has been widely parodied in American pop culture. From 2016 to 2017, the painting was displayed in Paris at the Musée de l'Orangerie and in London at the Royal Academy of Arts in its first showings outside the United States. It's approximately 78 by 65 centimeters in dimension. The last painting in this section of the puzzle, which I absolutely love, is titled Parc Bay Lou, in English, Park Near Lou. It was painted by Swiss-German artist Paul Klee in 1938 and is an interpretation of the foliage he saw at a park in the city of Lucerne in Switzerland. Klee's wife Lily traveled several times in the late 1930s to Lucerne for health reasons. And while she was there, Klee and Lily would often stroll through the park. He had an individual style which drew influence from Surrealism, Expressionism, and Cubism. He is highly regarded for his explorations into color theory, and his lectures named Writings on Form and Design Theory are considered very important to modern art. Park Near Lou is painted with oil and colored paste on paper, on jute. The dimensions of the painting are 100 by 70 centimeters in size, so it's a pretty good size. The original frame strips remain on the painting. It depicts black symbols which represent trees and their branches, as well as paths within the park. The trees are devoid of leaves as if it were still winter. The surrounding zones of color appear to be foliage. There is a strong contrast between the darker trees and the colorful foliage. For this reason, one interpretation of this painting is that the painting represents spring and winter, and both blossoming and death within the same image. The painting is currently on display at the Zentrum Paul Klee in Bern, Switzerland. The Zentrum Paul Klee is a museum dedicated to the artist himself designed by the Italian architect Renzo Piano. bag is done. So this was section 14, 
bag 18, which means I only have nine bags to go. Nine bags to go. Oh, it's going to be done so soon. What am I going to do afterwards? Seriously, I loved this section. The thing is, the paintings themselves were very easy to assemble. And I love the park near Lou. I knew I would. So colorful, so fun. The frames weren't too bad at all. And I'm really getting to know the frames because they repeat that I, the more that I do the same frame, the easier it gets, obviously. But those beige background pieces make it that I would say this section is an easy to medium because I think I spent the last three and a half hours just on beige pieces. And you'll notice in the video, I actually went and grabbed another section of a previous puzzle because it was just a big, well, it's not that big, but it's big when it's all beige, one color, this area right here. And I was just like, I need some help. So I grabbed the similar section from another part of the puzzle, brought it over, and that helped me put in what I call the specialty pieces, the no prong, four prong, one prong, three prong, those pieces, just to get them out of the way to help reduce the time spent on beige pieces. Now, when sorting the beige pieces, because I'm more familiar with the puzzle, I'm actually better at sorting the beige pieces and like subsorting them. Not only do I know which direction they go, but I actually kind of have an idea if they go along the edge of the puzzle or maybe in the middle of the puzzle. So that helps. I am getting to know the puzzle and the pieces and where the false fits. Remember, I talked about those before where they can happen right at the top corner here. The entire puzzle took me 12 hours and eight minutes to do. So really not that long. And frankly, if it wasn't for all the beige pieces, I would say it's quite an easy section and very enjoyable to do because the paintings are all so different from one another, which makes it that much more fun to complete. Now, what else do I have to say? That's about it, really. The next section of the puzzle is one large painting with one large frame. I think I only have that one and two more to do that it's just one large painting. I mean, there's only nine sections left. That's gonna be done so soon. Oh, but I'm loving it. And I hope you're enjoying this as well. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao!